Good. Cut. So many things this morning all at once. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to take a, an oil sample and send it out. Okay. You got a cup or you want me to use one? So because I don't know much about the history of this engine, we're going to do oil samples and track, um, track whatever metals the engine might be putting out. What are they? What are they? Uh, so if the engine starts to wear, it, 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 like, so we get a baseline, yep. and then if things changes, we, we will see, yeah, Over time. it's a trend analysis. Really. So it's, it's something, it, an individual report doesn't actually tell you much. It's what well, they if all, it's real bad, if it's yeah. real bad, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have some level of level of uh, like iron and chrome and lead and all these things, and they'll give you they'll have what's a normal or abnormal. Yep. Show you a little like a little graph of where you are in that, and then it's sort of up to you in long term to turn it out. Thank you. Can you have no? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no longer with the CBC. I'm now with Wing X. <laughs> <laughs> um. Excellent. So, are we, um, because this engine sat for four years? I would expect some, at uh, the first time, a little higher than the normal level of uh, 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 fuel. Okay. Uh, because, and they'll, they'll put a little note saying it could be this, could be this, whatever. I want it be sitting with some level of small amount of corrosion. Yep. Uh, we did what we looked at. We didn't see much corrosion, so no, they might have got away with it. But the, the cylinders are cracked, so there shouldn't be too much. There shouldn't be too much. Too much. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So this is the O300C. It uh, doesn't have an oil filter. It has an oil screen, Yep. Um, which means you have to change the oil every 20 hours. But if you put in an oil filter, it's every 50? Yep. So we're gonna put on an oil filter adapter so I don't have to change the oil quite as often. Um, and we're gonna put a quick drain plug in so it'll be easier to uh, drain the oil when it's time not, to drain it. Not as messy for sure. So. And it's also easier to cut open an oil filter than pull those screens out every time. Time-wise, for sure. And the, like, if once you, we see the screen, we'll pull the, I think, I haven't read the instructions, but normally you take the screen out of the action, so you yep. get right out of there. And you'll see the screen. It's hard to figure out if anything's coming through it. Uh, once in, like, so I think a lot of times they miss what the indicators are. Like, so there's metal in there, yep. and you just can't find it. Because the screen doesn't catch it? Or? it? Well, it catches it, but it's... It's not like it's in a container, right? So if you, you pull the thing out and everything globs out or whatever, it's just yep. not as good. So, and the, the microns, like the, the, the amount you're taking out is greater. It's just an all around good thing. See, the idea is we don't get the sledge out of the bottom. This is gonna come pretty hard and fast. Here. Okay, uh, buddy, you want to get a, you go get the part. The part. Oh, but you see, did you see what happened there? So, oh yeah, so it's... Which is, this is very normal, because it's all the sledge sitting on the bottom. I don't know how to interpret it, but they're all like that. So, okay, yeah. so I'm, I'm not freaked out by the fact that you just... Found some <laughs> found... fine metal particulate. Yeah. Okay. That is the bottom of the oil sump. So everything, everything. Yeah. The sediment, like there's sediment in it. That was the idea, part of the idea of us running it, twofold. One is it warms up the oil so it flows quicker. Yep. The other is it stir up that sediment, get it up suspended in the oil, and then it comes out with it. So we're trying to, you know, so like a good circuit and well stirred oil would bring out even more of that. So, and it would, but it would still build. It's like a cavity right in the bottom of the engine. Yeah. Okay. Does this make sense, Chris? Uh, somewhat, yeah. It's a, very similar to another style, like uh, the one I have on my plane. Pretty common. Okay. Yeah. 
And so the, a directive just came out. You might have received it in the, in the mail. For the for the other one, that's I, oil the directive came out for the one that I didn't buy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the one you didn't buy, or th this is the same type of thing. Like it's an F and M, but now yep. it's a, a Stratus, or what do they call it? Yeah, Stratus. Yep. But it's the same. And so the, on the directive, what it is is this piece is coming loose, right? And over the years, I could show you in the back. They, they went from having this to a paper gasket and the, the copper yeah, gasket, yeah, yeah. and then they switched back. So I stocked up on the paper carpet. You know, so that's another you know, business falter of mine. I'll be able to keep them forever. But they went to the, it went, they went, they went to these copper crush. The copper, yeah, here, I'll show you the kit just out of curiosity. So when they leaked all the time, they came up with this solution to use that, right? Uh, so, right? And so, yeah. but then the directive came out and said, get rid of that paper gasket. And now you go back to these, so it's all to so the copper ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and there are, you, you, yeah, like you were affected, but you weren't affected because you got it after the thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So and you're all set. Still bummed about those magnetos. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I can do. Side note. Side note. I just, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at the magnetos thinking, man. They're 65 foot. That's your hold. And so this stuff just. It, so we'll just put a little line here. Okay. And so that's just something that if it if it moves, yeah. it breaks that line of, of red there. That's it, yeah. And you know that it's moved and needs to be yeah. retorqued. Yep. Yeah. And then we wire it all up. I'll take just looking at it. I'm happy with that. Yeah, looks nice. Even though almost the same color as the engine too. <laughs> that means anything. And then this, did you take this wire off? Yeah, we gotta put that okay. piece right back in there. And is there anything that goes in this hole? Uh, yeah, that's that's where the wire goes. That's your oil temperature probe. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. got it. Yep. That's why I'm not the mechanic. <laughs> Modifying for auto fuel. So here we go. Here we go. So <laughs> we're gonna take this. I don't have my rivet gun, so it's gonna take. I gotta have to go get some tools. Should we get it all lined up before I do the full modification? <laughs> <laughs> so, so Chris and I are laughing because um, I purchased the Peterson STC to modify my aircraft to use unleaded auto fuel. Um, not all the time. And we, I'm sure there's going to be a huge discussion about using auto fuel and ethanol and blah, 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 blah. But there are some airports that I want to go to um, where 100 low lead uh, is in short supply and auto fuel may be the only way to go. So Chris is modifying and you see he's putting a metal band around the oil filler cap. That's it. <laughs> and um there we go that's the modification oh this sticker i'm holding in my hand has to go on the panel that's it that's it that's a that's a 395 dollars plus labor modification to my aircraft to, to use auto fuel and i'm kind of laughing about that but you know these are the things that you do mine is only missing uh the placards you know, and so it, it's been done. You can read it in the book. You can see some of that paperwork that you saw, but in the paperwork it says if you don't have placards and stuff, it's not legal. And so I called them, and I think it was two hundred dollars U.S. to get two, two stickers. <laughs> stickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, owning a plane's fun. <laughs> So 
So what Andre's been telling me is that somewhere in the 61 year history of this airplane, this leading edge has been replaced and squeezed. No, 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 but somewhere in the past, someone has worked yeah, on this and they replaced, he made they replaced it. Yeah. So they've replaced the leading edge and it's not the right shape. No. Okay. Not the right shape. So in order to put the stole cuff on, Andre's going to have to do some extra work to, to make yeah. it, to make it all fit. See. Yeah. So you can see it, there's a gap there and it just doesn't quite fit the way it's supposed to because the leading edge is not quite the right shape. And here, that's nice. Yeah. Because you follow the rib here with this one. Yep. So it fits well. Nice. Very nice. So a little extra work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>